and welcome Penny that we've got here with us today. Firstly, I would actually like to introduce Michael Grom and point your direction to this exhibition here. This is Michael's debut exhibition with us. He was a little bit nervous and isn't going to do an artist talk, um, but I'll give you a bit of a spiel on him first. Um, Michael completed a Bachelor of Fine Arts at the University of Ballarat in 2002. He's exhibited widely over the past 13 years, staging solo exhibitions and being included in numerous group shows both in Melbourne and Geelong. Grom has been a finalist for the Scope Galleries Art Prize, the Metro Gallery Art Prize, the Fletcher Jones Contemporary Art Prize and was announced the winner of the David Pratt Drawing Award in 2001. Now the reason why Michael is having his exhibition in this space today is because last year he was a recipient of the FLG Emerging Artist Award. He just put on a beautiful display of works at last year's Emerging Artist Show and we decided to sign him onto the gallery table. So Michael is just over there. Um, we'll be free to Now, Hannah Quinn Liven. I wanted to introduce Hannah firstly by reading an excerpt by the essay of Owen Craven, who wrote the catalogue essay for this show. Standing in front of Hannah Quinn Liven's alluring abstract wall sculptures, which she calls spatial drawings, prints or paintings, is like looking through a microscope at a living organism and admiring its intrinsic beauty. Quinn Liven works across multiple media, including printmaking, drawing, painting and sculpture, to create artworks that are seemingly endless. Lines twist and turn, ebb and flow, and cause a sense of movement and undulation of life and vitality. Hannah Quinn Liven is one of those artists who never stands still. <coughs> As Owen just described, she pushes the boundaries of drawings into realms that always surprise, and she's certainly one of the most prolific artists that we have here at Flinders Lane. Hannah has most recently created a major work for the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra in January, incorporating performance and vocal work, which I'm sure Hannah will talk about later. She was curated into an impressive exhibition of artists working in the realm of drawing at the Newcastle Art Gallery, was part of a survey of contemporary Australian artists titled The Motion, The Body and Movement in Contemporary Practice that toured nationally, and she's been invited to showcase her work in multiple international exhibitions also. She was the winner of the Shire of East Pilbara Award in 2014 and a finalist in the Alice Prize. She's also in the collections of the National Gallery of Australia, Deakin University, the Australian National University and the Hotel Hotel Collection. I'd like to pass over to Hannah, who will give us a beautiful insight into her practice in this exhibition. I'm Portuguese and here for having been part of the um, artists at the gallery. I just feel very honoured to be part of this opportunity that you've um, created here. Thank you. Congratulations to Michael and this amazing exhibition. Um, and thank you for all of you for coming today to um, help us celebrate what we've, what we've made over the last few months. Um, to begin, I wanted to sort of give you a bit of a um, sort of journey of my, my sort of development in my practice since last time I had a show here last um, March. And um, so, sort because of, a lot of my work sort of respond and build upon the pre previous work, so it's, you can sort of fully understand what I've made today um, by sort of understanding where I've been coming and exploring. Um, so, Selective so here is the title of the show, um, and the, is in sort of the idea is an object or concept where small elements standing for the com um, complete structure of, what, um, of which it is part of. And um, so, this this last um, sorry. <laughs> so this is the body of work I made last time I was um, showing. In this lane that last March. It's called Still Motion. Um, and what I was exploring was um, the issues regarding drawing in space. It's difficult to see in this picture here, but the, the wire work is floating on top of the, the drawn surface on the canvas. But what I was interested in here is the sense of drawing combining two dimensions and three dimensions on a two-dimensional plane. And it's only until you approach the drawing closely that you become aware of the two different elements. Um, it's called transfer. And the next work is called um, Times Out of Joint. I was trying to address the same issue um, of movement, but with, but with the emphasis of friction. The idea of how the, the line 
lines of the canvas um, are sort of twisting and curving across the two-dimensional plane, but suddenly the canvas structure doesn't um, just become just a passive sort of frame where the lines are placed on, but it becomes active in space and emphasizes the movement of the um, lines on top of the canvas. The next idea I was trying to explore is in, in a work called Driftwood, which is suspended in midair. In this work, I was trying to sort of look into the ideas of how I'm so interested in the different elements of drawing and how you can sort of not only look at a drawing from one perspective, but how you can look through a drawing and into another drawing and how they can respond to each other. So the layers of, um, it's a lithograph print, actually the window frame if you want to have a closer look, and how you can see the lines of the works on canvas behind it. And suddenly when it's suspended, um, the drawing suddenly has sort of body and weight and is physically sort of active in the space and you, you start to want to um, not only visually look at it but start to want to touch it and, um, and the work starts to look back at you. From this sort of starting point, it's sort of a, a turning point for me in my practice because before that I was sort of looking at how um, how sort of, sort of internal ideas of how to visualize in my practice, the ideas of memory and how it operates visually. And in still motion, I started to sort of expand, not only looking in, but expand out, even though they're both influencing and affecting each other. So the idea of um, how those um, memories operate in your daily life, but also how how different things around you affect how you um, sort of visualise them or think about them. And often, a lot of my work is very time consuming, so what's happening around me in the world starts to almost knit themselves into my drawings and be, be um, sort of take breath into them. And even though at the beginning it might not have been that, through the process, it becomes more and more that. So it's, it's often a surprise for me um, where the drawing ends up leading me. So I'm not really following my um, talk at all. So I have to go with what I'm doing. Um, so after a still motion, um, I try to sort of focus more on just focusing on one work at a time and see how far it could go. So in the last picture I did um, everything solid melts into air which is in this piece. And so I wanted to sort of work in expanding that idea as far as it could go into a state of suspension. So this work is sort of letting the lines keep breathing and, and growing and so it ended up being um, two kilometres of wire. It took me um, three months to make across my, um, well, it started in my kitchen table and then added three tables and then benches and at the end you couldn't come through my front door, you had to go around the corner and walk underneath the table to get to the bedroom. So I have a very lovely husband as well, um, except for all of my, my um, growing works. So this work is um, state of suspension, so that sense of weight of a drawing that's suspended and not relying on the stability of the solid wall. Um, and the sense of scale, you, I find scale is not just like a, a side thing but becomes very important because suddenly you become sort of not only visually engaged with the work but physically because it's, a, it's affecting you physically. So sometimes you can be <coughs> dwarfed by the larger work. Um, and this work was sort of trying to bring the lines of the shadows um, that is cast on the wall down into the floor, capturing the shadows of the <coughs> abstraction of the wire I was making on the floor, but flipping it from the shadow into line. Almost the wall is sort of melting into the floor. And this sort of work was sort of looking at, um, so the wire um, element of the drawing took three months and then 
a week to do, do the salt drawing um, underneath. So I've done a salt drawing here that took me to, um, four days to do. And um, in this work, I was sort of looking at um, the, how much the sort of movement there is of people traveling across the world in the sense of sometimes there's, there's a lot of freedom in people's travel, but then other times there's a lot of stillness in people's travel in the sense of not being able to move forward, but not, not able to move back. You kind of stuck in this unstable situation um, that's, that's not, um, that's why it was important that the work was suspended to try to capture that sort of feeling where you're sort of drifting and floating and trying to work out what the next step is. And um, the, the, the issues that I'm interested in, oh, no, no, um, that I'm interested, I can come across here, um, is movement and um, rhythm in a lot of my drawing process. So trying to capture in the making process um, the rhythm of trying to sort of convey visually these different ideas. So the, so the quiet pace of the salt laying down, so if you stay too still in one section, there'll be a big pile of salt, so you still have to sort of keep going. And um, there was, um, and if there was a mistake, just adapt to it in a way. In much of sort of how life can happen, sometimes you can control it exactly how you want, and then sometimes something happens and you just have to sort of curve around and or adapt to it. The next work um, <coughs> is part of a survey show of contemporary. Um, these are little details. So suddenly with the salt work, um, not only could you look at it from front to front, but it sort of encouraged you to walk around it. And also some people, because I'd be on the ground most of the week, suddenly people were sitting down and lying down to view the drawing from side on. And it became almost like an embossing and a carving um, in the drawing. So the next work, um, Vibration Disrupted, I was sort of expanding on the same idea um, of, but instead of being suspended, it's almost like stretched between two places, that you're still stuck in one place, but you're sort of pulled against the other place. Um, but the idea of it being heavy, um, but also held tight. Um, this work was sort of um, woven with black wire, but also thick rubberized wire and um, and tape, which um, transferred the shadows into this complex web. Which um, I had never done a salt drawing with this with this web before. So when I approached it, I was I didn't know which element to start to draw. So. Um, it was a nice surprise by the end of the week what, what ended up coming out of it. And um, a lot of these works, because they're ephemeral, a little sort of, as you can see over there, a little mark, suddenly it's, it changes. But with the finger, you can sort of carve it back into play. Um, and this work, I kind of had to be underneath it, but because it was pinned tight to little screws, if I knocked my head to a side, it would just spring open and um, sort of destroy everything I'd made for the whole week. So I was con continuously going, oh, I hope it doesn't like bounce it off. Um, but it stayed for um, three months, which I was very happy about. So this is underneath the drawing and then on the side of the drawing. So this work, I, I sort of started to be aware of, if you're exploring the idea, of scale, how important it is to have a figure next to it. Because when I first made this work, um, a lot of people thought it maybe was like a meter high, but actually it was five and a half meters high. And the sense of having a figure there suddenly, you became aware of what you were looking at, what, how, how would it feel to be next to that object. This was um, 
our work that we did over the Christmas holidays and performed in, um, so I didn't really have a Christmas holiday, um, in January at the National Portrait Gallery um, over a two week period. And um, this was sort of pushing the idea of suspension to the extremes in the sense of how it was a site specific work, so it was made for its site. Um, and touching the roof of the portrait gallery and then down into the space and it was, I, I, I suspended it in, um, it was made in seven different sections and then I had to weave it on site um, and throughout the course of the week it sort of slowly, organically sort of merged into the space um, but unlike um, state of suspension that was very still and vibration disrupted and with a little bit of a touch with your fingers, it would just sway almost like a heartbeat. I wanted to sort of bring in more movement into it and the sense of rhythm of when there's a, um, you know, there's a rhythm that I'm creating in the wire, but what happens when something else that I can't control comes into it and then a third element. So we decided to bring in um, two contemporary dancers that flip the, the concept of a moving line across a two-dimensional page. Suddenly the page itself, which was the dancers, were con continuously changing and warping and moving. And somehow the wire drawing had to sort of suddenly keep changing and balancing themselves across what the dancers were doing. And the, the fabrics were out of latex, so they were very stretchy. I wanted the dancers to be able to pull against each other as they would be doing my wire drawing. So at the beginning they were just so gently touching it, but then suddenly they were stretching it, walking on top of it and climbing on underneath it. And it became very active. Um, and then, but they could almost start to sort of flow into a, a natural rhythm. But suddenly we brought in two contemporary dance, um, singers as well, which were pierced through the space and vibrated off um, the ceiling and the um, walls and the, we had two different um, voices happening at once and um, each time that they performed it was completely new so they were responding to the wire drawing, responding to each other and um, it was that sense of um, each time almost you were surprised what was going to happen and for me, I kind of felt that the rhythm that they were creating suddenly pierced through my own chest and started happening, like forcing my heartbeat to move a certain way. Um, and the ripples that they created through the page of their dresses were incredible. Um, I've made a little video for you to get a sense of how it was um, through the space.
Um, so from a very spacious space of the National Portrait Gallery, the rooms were sort of um, you know, about this large, so they were very intimate. Um, and that sense of sort of pulling the drawing into all those different elements and seeing them all together. And uh, unlike a lot of painters who don't like people touching their works on canvas, touch is something quite important for me, so uh, that's why I hand forge the steel so you can touch the rhythm of my mark. But also the, the performers would scrape so sw their um, fingers across the canvas so you could hear the sound of the, the paint across the canvas as well as the sound of the steel in the space. And that, that blurring between the figure and the foreground as well as the background into one. So almost her body, um, Shikura's body almost disappeared into the canvas structure. Um, the next um, stage is sort of one, a little clip of um, the setting where I've been making for the last um, nine months or so out at um, a property near the Manbiji River. And so a lot of people have been so puzzled by what I've been doing with the steel drawings. So I wanted to show you like a process of how they're made. So I have a portable forge that I heat the steel rods and then I texture them by hammering them. Um, and in the why hammering is important is that like each of the smaller wire drawings, they're all hand carved around my fingers in a sense of sort of um, time and memory is embedded in each each line. So I wanted to expand that into a three-dimensional, larger scale work that could be outdoors. Um, but I didn't want to lose the, the movement of the smaller works. Um, so that's why I've been sort of, um, texturing them and curving them, carving them into each line. Um, and so that sort of leads us into our, our recent show, Connected Key. So this work here is bring back into a smaller frame uh, what I was doing with counterweight with the large scale work on canvas, but um, stretching the lines from the two dimensional planes into a hand forged steel drawing. So um, this is this section here is the curving texture of the um, dancers in motion and how the idea of sometimes you can zoom in and emphasize a small little element that that gives you insight into a bigger whole. Um, this work um, in the middle of the room is taking the same sort of idea of um, counterweight, but instead of relying still on the wall, it's in, in the present um, sort of state of the room. So that sense of the, the very uh, spontaneous movement of the dancer suddenly gets frozen in space um, and continues to last. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to come up and ask Hannah questions if you'd like. Um, otherwise, help yourself to the bar, grab some cheese, and enjoy the works. <laughs>